Cheers, man. Uh, both have said good luck, have fun, good game, and we're gonna get straight into it. Looks like Lorto's going in with the, uh, uh, with the spam. But here we go, spawning us in at the top right, two o'clock position. We do have the green Terran. It is the Polish Terran. It is Koga. And spawning in at the bottom right, it's the winner of the last match, uh, showing some cool PVT skills. It is SCC's Rota. Let's just make sure the overlay is updated, so Rota is in the 5 o'clock position. Koga is in the top, uh, top right, so 2 o'clock. And it is orange versus green in this case, based on the overlay, uh, the overlay layout. Here we go. And now everything should be ready, hopefully. Uh, I always worry that the overlay isn't right, but it looks like it is. We're all good. We're back on the Mancha, one of my favourite maps of all time. I'm uh, so glad we're getting to see so many games on this map today. But yeah, uh, overall it's been pretty fun now. Koget and I have a bit of a weird relationship, I'd say. Like, I wouldn't really think of him to A, know who I am or really care about who I am. Uh, but he does pop by my stream every once in a while, and he's always really friendly. Uh, he did do the little bit of casting with Sail at Italy when uh, he was doing the Italian Esports Open. And uh, every once in a while he'll pop in and offer his advice to me, and uh, yesterday we actually played a few games. So we played some TBC, he, he played Zerg, uh, apparently Zerg was his main race before, so pretty interesting games. Looks like we will see the... Uh, not opting to go for the wall at the natural that you do see players like Fancy go for a lot of the time. I know this this map isn't played as much, uh, but it looks like Rota possibly going to be a little bit more cheesy, thinking he can't play a straight up game against Koget, who is one of the strongest foreign Terrans, but we'll soon see. Uh, this is going to be a test of Rota's skill, and hopefully if he does do well, um, I'm hoping Rota does, because you know what? It's going to be quite difficult for him, but if he does well, I hope he gets a little bit more confident, because I, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I, well, like the past like four months, I would say, I was really struggling with confidence, and I was tilting a lot, so every every loss was quite difficult, and um, they all sort of built up on top of each other. But now I, I don't I, like, I feel a lot more confident. I'm not getting angry when I lose, and I think Rota just needs to go through that as well. He just needs a couple of games that show he's not as bad as he thinks he is, and maybe he'll start to feel better about himself now. Koget's being very, very brave here. He's actually got well, he's not being that brave. He's going for one Rex FE, building the, uh, not building the barracks on the low ground and going for the wall though, which is kind of interesting. You kind of need to do that. Uh, you can do a really nice wall here with the uh, barracks and the, the thing, but I guess he feels confident. He knows that Rote isn't going to be... Uh, Rote is going to be the more aggressive player here, but right now, uh, neither of them actually scouted each other. Now, Rota is moving his probe back the other way, and I, I don't get why he's doing this. He did this before. It's like he's trying to chase the SCV down to maybe confuse it, but... He's already scouted this base, I'm fairly certain. Unless he went straight into here and didn't actually check the base, which is kind of funny. Uh... Okay, so I may need to sort out that. I just saw in chat someone said in one of the first round games nobody showed up. So um, unfortunately I'll have to give one of them a walkover. It's going to be a coin flip of who actually gets it. Yeah, just uh, just sort of from my perspective, the reason why I don't turn on that bar straight away is because I want to make it a little bit more exciting. I don't want to really show off the build orders. I want. I want things to be a little bit mysterious. Uh, it, it it comes from me watching a lot of Pro League and seeing, like, especially in this past week even, I've watched at least three Pro League games a day uh, from like 2011, uh, because basically on the way to work I've got a new phone with a bigger data package, so uh, on the bus to keep myself entertained. Uh, that was actually a really nice trap there by Rota. Uh, to keep myself entertained I've been watching um, fancy vods to sort of learn from them as well, so uh, you see them do this a lot in Pro League, they kind of don't want to give off the, um, like they did have the thing in the bottom right, which did show it all. But yeah, it, it's more a personal decision just to kind of hide the, hide the status of the game really, to make it a little bit more exciting. 
Uh, not really, not really sure if people enjoy it or not, but it's something that I've chosen to do this week. If people don't like it, please let me know, and I won't do it again. Uh, it's just more my own, my own thing I wanted to try. Uh, over the next few Clash of Chars, there's going to be a few things that I'm going to do uh, to, to not change up the format, but to kind of change up how things actually go. Uh, looks like Rafi is going to put on some pressure here with his Dragoons. That Dragoon not in range. Kind of interesting he's not firing. I guess that's the weird diagonals. Like, you would have thought that was actually in range as well, but it's not. Uh, kind of not doing as much damage, forcing the SUVs to repair as much, so... Bit of a mistake there, but I guess he's waiting for range to finish. It's actually very difficult to get this to work. Like, there we go, range must have just finished. Nope. Is he doing plus one air weapons? Is this plus one air weapons? Or is this just really weird in terms of range? Wait, is Rota being really, really, um... Is he doing the build where you sort of fake out going range and then you cancel it? Well, this, these look like they have range. So, I'm kind of confused here. We do see the tank sieging up there. Rota needs to be a bit more careful now. He can't just harass the bunker as much. But he has bought himself time to build up the build up the base, and here we go. It must be plus one air weapons because Sorota is going for double Stargate. Double Stargate in the top left spawn. Gonna be hard for Koget to actually go and search for this. Now is Koget gonna know what's going on? Is he gonna build an armory? Looks like he isn't yet. He could actually get completely blindsided by this. Now, if this is for carriers, it's gonna be a long time. It is for carriers. Now, it takes about five minutes for the carriers to get their interceptors, be out on the field and everything, uh, in order to do any damage. Now, Koga has five minutes pre to prepare for this. Is he going to find it? Uh, it's going to be hard for him to find it. He's building a single turret, just making sure there's no DTs or anything like that. Uh, he did see like a very late thing here. Uh, he even has the SUV down here, going to be building another turret most likely. Now, catching this Dragoon off guard is really good for him. Gets a free Dragoon kill, not actually losing any vultures. But he's not really going to be able to do too much damage. Now, the question here is, is Koga going to be able to scout? If he can scout this, he will almost un undoubtedly do a good job. But if he does not scout this quick enough... He could have a lot of problems. Now it looks like he is going to try and scout around for a third base. Looks like he could even be thinking about hiding a third base himself. Maybe scouting for some, uh, for some proxies, but no, it is going to be a third. Now where is that scan? Let's actually have a look. He scans the main. He doesn't see any tech and he sees an extra gateway. Uh, he's even checking another place here. And uh, he's not going to find the, find the Stargates. Now he's looking around, he knows something's up. Only seeing two gateways at this point in time is not normal. Now are these vultures going to go to the right place? No they're not. Koga is definitely sure there's something wrong going on, but he's not sure why. He's added another two missile turrets uh, just to defend against possible reavers. He's building an armory. I think he's figured out what's going on. Oh, this could be good. The vulture spots it. The vulture gets it at least two minutes, I believe, before all the carriers come out. And he knows exactly what to do now. He's sending all of his vultures up there. He's going to try and get the pylons. If he can take the pylons out before the, uh, before the Stargates actually finish, this could be devastating for Rota. Now, Rota can still hold this, but this is going to make this rush a little bit harder. Now, weirdly, Rota actually built this by the uh, by the ramp and not over here or something, but I guess he just felt quite confident. Now, the first carrier is out. At least one carrier has been completed. No... Oh, this could be bad. Mine! 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 Okay. The mines don't kill the Dragoons. The Dragoons can clean up these vultures. It's going to be hard, though. Oh, he's actually going to be able to mind drag the mind drag, taking out the Dragoon. Uh, but this carrier will eventually save the pylon, I believe. Um, it takes a long time for one carrier with one interceptor to kill anything. Uh, but there's going to be two interceptors soon. Uh, maybe three. Uh, but he has got some uh, has got some things on the way. Uh, the vultures will go down. Now, what is Koget's reaction going to be? He's added up to five factories. Looks like he will be adding a sixth. He has his third base mining already. This is one benefit he does have this game. Uh, usually, 
you wouldn't see the third base for quite a while, but he knew that uh, Rota was being very, very reclusive in his base, so he does manage to get that third base up incredibly quickly, adding up to the six factories. Are we going to see a seventh? Not too sure. Uh, upgrades on the way, Rota on four gateways now, so he doesn't have to go all in with the carriers. But the Dragoons moving in. There's only one tank here to defend. The tank goes down. How much damage can these Dragoons do? The reinforcements come in from the other angle. Is this going to be enough? Rota's Dragoons go down immediately. The turrets are up, but once again, the Stargates do survive. The pylon is alive. A single Vulture with two health is all that remains to kill this pylon. Now, once the carriers have gone away, uh, everything could change. But for now, uh, Rota is most certainly behind. Uh, we do see the uh, vultures still trying to move in. Looks like we do have a counterattack going on. This is the best thing you can do as a Terran player. It forces the Protoss to pull his carriers all the way across the map. Doesn't allow him to dictate the pace of the game of the carriers. Now, this is an incredibly good map for carriers due to this space. This space here, the dead zone, is one of the most annoying places to deal with carriers on any map. Uh, there's also a lot of dead space here which you can bounce back between. That is exactly what makes carriers powerful. Now, Rota's carrier is getting caught out. One of them losing all of its shield does manage to get back. Not quite on full interceptors yet on all of the carriers. He needs to be careful though. He's not microing well. He needs to pull back his carriers. He can't be taking uh, Goliath shots like this. Does save one of them. A nice Dragoon does come in. But the Goliath shooting down on the carriers. There's not enough anti-air here though. The Dragoon's going down. Three more Goliaths to remain, four remain, three now. One of the carriers goes down though, and that's a big loss. The Vulture moves in to try and take out this pylon. Is it going to be able to do it? It's only on two health. No, it's not. I go back to the uh, back to the battle here. Once again, Rota not really microing his carriers very well, taking a lot of hull damage. Now, this is another really good spot for carriers to be in. Uh, but Rota does hold. Uh, he stopped the counterattack for now. And basically... TVP, when carriers are involved, is like a ticking clock. Basically, Koget needs to kill the Protoss before the Protoss gets to a certain number of carriers. Uh, it looks like he's sending an SCV to try and scout out, maybe take an extra base, but I'm not sure he's really going to be able to do that with the two carriers. Looks like he's uh, scanning around, seeing what's going on. He sees that the third base is coming up from Rota, uh, but once again, he's going to have... Oh, this, this pylon is so close to death. He needs to go up and build another pylon, otherwise these uh, stargates are completely useless. Uh, fifth gateway is on the way for Rota, the robotics facility as well is very important, you get ops at this stage in the game. And this is going to be quite the battle coming up here, there is a lot of Goliaths now with the tanks. The Terran still has, uh, for the time being, uh, the, uh, the actual... Um, the initiative in this game. Like, the Terran is the one controlling everything right now. Not many Protoss units do remain. He needs to be careful not to engage with just his gateway units. There's not many not many gateway units to be able to do too much. He's trying to take down some of the Goliaths. Gets three of them. Will he get a fourth? It doesn't look like he will. All of his Dragoons do go down, but here we go. The four carriers on the way. Another one just has spawned. Now, what can he do? He's going to be behind in supply. As we can see here, 50 supply behind. Uh, but these carriers need to do their job. One of the carriers going down immediately. Rota, without the carrier micro, is not going to be able to win this game. The carrier's caught out in the open. Goliath from all angles. Two of the carriers go down. Three. All four carriers will go down. GG. And Rota loses the first game to Koga. Or Koga T, as I used to call him. Yeah, good game there by Koga, playing that almost perfectly. Uh, there wasn't really too much else he could have done uh, to sort of win that game any better. Uh, we will be moving on to the second map, so let's just bring up the uh, map screen again, uh, just to sort of show you. Uh, just another reminder, in the top right or in the top left, there's usually a code there which you can put in on Matarino to add a free dollar to the map pool. Uh, I've, got, um, I've got my Nightbot spamming that. But uh, just in case you haven't seen it, uh, there are, I believe, 20 codes. I'm not too sure. Uh, I'm not actually sure how much they're supporting me, but that's a big thanks to Matarino who have given me the codes to do that now. Uh, looks like Tai2 has just arrived, but I think he's a little bit late. His opponent took a walkover, I believe. It was actually Hamu. Uh, so let's just report a score for this game. 
just so Richly isn't waiting too long. I'm just gonna give uh, the Richly the walk over here. Okay, so it's gonna be Richly versus ba um, Richly versus Babu. Looks like we're gonna get into this second game of the series. So uh, let's get ready to rumble. Got to just said in Discord, go get scouted my proxy carrier's sad face. Okay, Koget said wait, so just while he says wait, I'm just going to quickly take a drink. And just sort of give my voice a rest for just a moment, guys. We'll be live shortly. Okay, well, I say that and he's back, so you know what? <laughs> Let's just get going. <laughs> Okay, so they're both ready. Uh, looks like Grota is not ready now. Okay, so both players are ready. We're starting the countdown. Let's get into the game. Good luck, have fun to both our participants. Oh. Go return rate 16. It will lag. Well, we're gonna try. <laughs> we're gonna try turn rate 16, guys. Let's see what happens. Gonna see if they want me to host. Koko's asking for his AK. He, he thinks he's better. He thinks he's good. That's a that's a confidence boost there. When you get asked by a foreign player, what's your AK? You got to feel good about yourself. And speaking of which, the guy probably feeling quite bad actually after that uh, that proxy carrier was scouted. It is going to be in the ten o'clock position. SCC's Rota and spawning. In the six o'clock position, well, seven o'clock, I guess. Six is more here. It is going to be our purple Terran player, Koge. My phone's going, but it can wait. We're in the middle of the game right now. So he is in ten o'clock, and Koget's in six. Okay, here we go. No, both of them. Ah, okay. They're talking about the AKA thing. Okay, so what difference are we going to see from here? Rosa is going to have to make some kind of a... Uh, some kind of an adaption to his play here. Uh, before he did play a little bit greedy going for that proxy carrier. But it looks like we may see a wall coming up here for Koga. Gonna build a wall at the front. Not building a full wall like you can do at the natural uh, for some reason. I guess it makes it a little bit easier later on not to have a wall here with the barracks because it does mess around with your pathing late game. Uh, but I always do prefer it. It does give you that 
defensive uh, defensive positioning you can use. Uh, so always pretty good to have. It looks like we do see both players scouting. I wonder if uh, if Koget's going to go in the right direction. It looks like he will. So unfortunately for Rota, he scouts in the wrong direction again. Uh, that's been three games in a row with Simferoto where he's where he's uh, got through, and that the music was my ringtone. <laughs> I can't believe you could hear my phone from all the way over there. Oh! They're asking about versions. Huh. I wonder why. Oh, he's hosted the wrong version. Oh yeah, wow, okay, I didn't notice this. Okay, well, we're gonna re. <laughs> just while they re, I'm just gonna quickly uh, check who phoned me. Just in case it wasn't too important. Back in a second. Okay, so I'm back. Looks like I'm gonna have to set up my thing again, but you know what? Could be worse. Yeah, it was Longinus 1 instead of Longinus 2. Okay. Now, spawning in different positions this time, we do have SCC Throtter in the 3 o'clock position and his opponent, the Blue Terran. It is Kugat in the same 7 o'clock position here. I said 6 there, but I'm going to change it to 7. Okay, let's just uh, quickly set this. So it is purple versus blue. Okay, and that should be up to date. And yeah, we're back to back to square one. Luckily, neither player really scouted each other. Uh, but just to show you the difference in the map, so the gas in Longinus 1 or Longinus 2 is on the left, whereas in Longinus 1 it's underneath, and the minerals are all against the wall. Um, and up here it's on the top instead of on the on the left, I believe. Bit of an awkward situation, but you know what? It's better to uh, better to have everything ready. Now I hope I haven't muted myself. No, I didn't. I always have to double check. I always get worried about that for some reason. It's kind of stupid, but uh, you know what? It's more for the the reason that the, there was new there was a newer version of Longinus because they fixed it basically. Gas on the bottom is very, very inefficient. Um, it's just one of those unfortunate things of the Brood War engine. And uh, Richly had, well, Richly got to walk over into the game against Baba, if people are asking about that. And of course, uh, version 2 is the one on Ladder Nil. Rota is being very sneaky here. 
Oh, it looks like you missed scouting, actually. I thought he was going to build a pylon and then go build gateways in the main. That's really fun. Uh, that is incredibly, incredibly fun. And yeah, as someone did point out, the coupon code is entirely free to use. Uh, basically, you just go to Matarino, go to Contribute, put in the coupon code you can see in the top left of your screen, and it will donate a dollar to the prize pool. Uh, any any sort of contributions will help with the coupon code. Uh, just make sure it all gets used up. Because basically, uh, Matarino are kind enough to give me the codes to give out. I'm not sure how many they've given me this time. It varies every time, and they never tell me. Uh, but the, obviously the more it gets used, the better, because it means more people visit Matarino, and more people are supporting the, uh, the platform, really, and it does make them more likely to uh, contribute to more tournaments in the future. So a big thanks to them, of course. Uh, we once again see the One Racks expand coming up for uh, for our Terran play here now. This is where the some of the differences come in. So you'd have the gas here in Longinus 1. Uh, but here we go, the barracks in the front, going to be used to make that zealot type wall, uh, just uh, helping him really defend against anything now. It uh, looks like we finally do see the uh, scout moving in to Rota's base, he will see that it is one gate range again, and it's exactly what he saw last time, uh, but last time of course he did see the plus one air weapons, uh, which is kind of funny. That looks like this probe is going to try and be a little bit sneaky, but this marine... This marine is a secret agent here, he's going to stop the probe building a proxy. This probe is 100% going to this location to build a proxy robo. Maybe not! He's actually just going to build a proxy right here. Uh, this marine is very, very good to scout with, but it's not going to see anything. There we go, we see the Dragoon pushing back the SCV finally. Now, is this marine going to see anything? Looks like it's not, so this is going to go completely unnoticed uh, for the time being. Is it going to be proxy at all? No. It's going to be a proxy gateway. Is he going proxy 3 gate? He's going to go proxy 3 gate, isn't he? He's countering the uh, the uh, the uh, one rack six man. Oh no. Oh no. This is going to be scouted again. Koga with the star sense going to find this here. What a great find. Rota is not going to be happy with that. Man, I feel sorry for Rota. That is like the perfect scout. How unfortunate for him is, like, then again, if this was three gateways, even with the scout, there's not really too much the marine can do. The probe does actually get away, he can actually come back another day, but it doesn't look like he will do. It's going to take a long time for these to both go down, he has one gateway in his main, uh, one in his nat- well, not one in his natural, but one at this natural, uh, the uh, third base of the top left spawn. But this is very hard to hold, even if you know about it. There's so many units that come barreling down at your front as long as you don't get supply blocked that this can be very, very difficult. Okay, it looks like we do have the Dragoons moving across the map. There's going to be another two popping out here. Rain should be done very shortly. The first tank is going to be on the way. Uh, he's going to need a lot of units very, very quickly if he wants to hold this. He's going to have to pull his SCVs. This is one of the builds that you can do as Protoss. Usually we would see a, a fourth gateway. Uh, but Rota not being pulled back by the Marine knows this is his window to attack. This is the opportunity he has to do some terrible, terrible damage. It's unlike Dustin Browder from StarCraft 2 here, but some insane damage to the uh, Terran player. Now he's not targeting properly, here we go, he's targeting, he can get a few of these SCVs, and when the Dragoon count gets high enough, it's very difficult to hold this. Gonna use his uh, barracks to try and make it harder to click on the uh, click on the bunker, but that does of course make it harder. For, oh no, he's getting beaten into the bunker, he's pulled back, he's taking a lot of damage on his Dragoons, pull back, and auto pull back, he does indeed. And here we go, we're going to go into a little bit of a stop moment as Rote is not going to continue with this aggression. He's actually going to double expand. This could be interesting here folks, we don't often see this, usually you would just go super all in off of a proxy 2 gate uh, with the gateway in your main, but you know what, this is actually going to work pretty well. It's going to be a long time before Kogut's going to feel... Uh, feel really able to push out and do any damage. Looks like he does have his academy on the way, so he will finally be able to scan this, but for the time being, he can't scout anything. Now, Rota unfortunately leaving his units in the wrong place, so one of the Dragoons does go down there to the tank. And Rota just sort of 
adding up his bases. His probe saturation is pretty good at his main. Uh, his probe saturation is getting there on his natural as well. Looks like he uh, even built the pile on there and sent his probe back. But here we go. Um, yeah, we have the scout coming out for Koga finally. He knows that the Dragoons have been pulled back, so he should know uh, that the all-in has been... Uh, well, hasn't actually been activated here. Now, he's still only on the two factories. Looks like he's going to add on his uh, command center uh, just to try and keep up in the economy stakes, but he doesn't really know what Rota's doing. Rota's going for the Robo here. Uh, he's got the Templar Archives as well, so we could see some DTs. And yes, in fact, we do. Now, is there any detection here for the Terran player? It looks like he does have a single, uh, single missile turret. The tanks are on sieging, though. This DT could actually run past, but more importantly, this DT is just going to make it very hard for um, Koget to expand. Like, he's going to have two scams, but he can burn through these really well. Now, is he going to go for the tanks? Is he going to just hide? It looks like he's going to try and stop the SUV from building the turret. Is he going to cancel it? No, he doesn't cancel it, so a free, a free turret kill there for the DT. Looks like we do have some pros being transferred up here now as well. And the window of opportunity for the DT is unfortunately passed. Um, a bit unfortunate there for Rota. Just gonna mute myself just for one second while I cough. Okay. So here we go. Looks like we do have the other DT being caught immediately, but that's both scans. So both scans have been used up. Uh, there will be a third scanner here shortly. Uh, is he gonna kill the scanner and rebuild it? Doesn't look like he will do. Not really too much need to now. The, the Vulture's just being incredibly annoying. The Observatory will be on the way very shortly, but there's no Observers for now. Can he clear the minefield? He needs to be careful. Oh, the mines! Oh, nice mine connections there. He nearly took the other mine as well. That would have been very, very bad for him. Now, another two DTs are on the way. Uh, they're going to catch these Vultures, but the Vultures... Do they have any mines left? I don't think they do. They do have one each, so he needs to make sure he uses these. We're doing a nice scan. They're also doing a really good job splitting off this DT, making sure they don't die, both die to the mines. And here we go. Uh, the DT, another DT even, just wailing down on the Terran Vultures. I'm not sure Kogut's actually uh, found this top right base, but he should know something's going up. Uh, something's going on, but he needs to make sure, or Rota needs to make sure, he gets his observatory up and he gets the observers, because if he doesn't, he is going to be in an awful position. Looks like an Arbiter Tribunal, though, is going to be the order of the day. Skipping, uh, in fact, yeah, I believe he's actually skipped the observatory. I can't see it anywhere. So he is not going to have any detection for the mines. He doesn't want detection for the mines right now. He is just going to use the fact he's going to have Arbiters. He's going to have very quick stasis, very quick recall, and you can micro against mines. So maybe he feels in a confident position, but here we go. Looks like Koga building up his army here. Going to be moving out in front of his third. This is going to be a hard push to defend. Rodota has got very, very few units. He's built a lot of DTs, but not much else. And this push could be the end of the game. Koga with a really strong 6 factory push or 4 factory, 5, 6, 7 factories now. The uh, science fleet will be on the way and it's going to hit before the Arbiters can spawn. And Rota may actually just lose the game here and now. There's absolutely nothing he's going to be able to do to defend this. He played a little bit too greedy. He's now 50 supply behind. And you know what? This is going to be bad. Apparently I need to do something with the microphone. I'm not sure what's wrong with it. Uh, if there is a problem, please let me know. Uh, but here we go. We do have the robo is going to go down. There's not really anything defending. The good thing for Arthur is he does have the top left bases, but it's not going to be enough. GG! Koget is going to be your victor in this series, and he's going to move forward.